so I would like to show you some of the outcomes of my PhD project, which is entitled Sexual Behavior and Vibrational Manipulation of Insect Vectors, the case of the middle hospital bug Philenus plumarius. So the late uh, the light motive of my thesis is to use innovative innovative methods to study and manipulate the behavior of insect vectors. And the main study case of my thesis is um, the middle hospital bug Philenus pumarius. But who is Philenus? Uh, this uh, common uh, insect is native to Europe, but it became a threat to the Europe to the continent after the introduction of the bacterium Xylella fastidiosa, which causes um, a disease in olive called uh, the olive quick decline syndrome, was symptoms you can see in the picture below. Xylenus plumarius acquired the bacterium from infected host plants and transmitted to health, healthy olive trees, which in turn becomes infected and uh, needs to be removed to avoid a further um, spread of the disease. <clears throat> and uh, what about Philenus pumarius? He's uh, an emitter, an insect belonging to the family Afrophoridae, uh, which uh, are known to cover themselves in a froth when they are nymphs. It's a person sucking insect. So uh, he has a mouth part, the stylet, which uh, use, he uses to penetrate the tissues of the plant and to feed uh, into the xylem. Is a very abundant insect and is highly prolifagous. And this uh, is a problem because even if he is a, a native species, it became a threat after the introduction of the bacterium. And due to this uh, uh, highly polyphagy and, and his abundance, it became a great problem to the European agriculture. The current control measures are posing a risk for the human and environmental health. But if we want to find uh, to develop integrated best management strategies, we need to ne know more about the biology, the ecology, mm -hmm. the behavior, and interspecific communication of the insect. And here we come with my uh, PhD project. The first step was to study the sexual behavior and the vibrational communication on the insect. Then I studied the physio physiology and the female perceptivity, so the willingness to mate. But uh, I also could use vibration to disrupt either the mating behavior of the insect or the feeding behavior. So as we well know, uh, in the field of biotremology, um, vibration, um, we study the vibration emitted by, the, by animals. And in insect, vibration can uh, be used to accomplish several crucial tasks, from foraging to parental care care and especially for mating. However, uh, with this knowledge, we can manipulate the behavior of the insect and we develop pest control strategies, such as vibrational traps, as it has been done for the bromarmorated stink bug, Aliomorpha alis, or uh, mating disruption strategies as the vibrational vineyard against uh, leaf hoppers. So the question is, can vibration be used to control also Philenus pumarius? Well, before answering that, we need to know more about the vibrational communication of the insect. And we, use, um, we can use laser doppler vibrometers to study the vibration uh, emitted by the insect. But also we can uh, stimuli, uh, stimulate <laughs> the insect with vibration by using mini shakers. Uh, most of my research was carried out at, uh, in Italy at Fondazione Edmund Mack, where I could rear and study the behavior of the insect inside the uh, biotermology lab. However, uh, you need to know that if when we study the emitting communication of an insect, we uh, can perform this experiment during the adult stage. In the case of Philanus pumarius, that has only one generation per year, we study the, the uh, vibrational communication during summer because the insect overwinters as egg, then nymphs hatch uh, in spring while adults emerge in the summer. So during summer, we, I could perform um, vibrational uh, uh, biosays uh, with males, females placed alone on the plant, with pairs and with trios. In total, I collected more than 700 recordings, 
which means a lot of data. But after analyzing all those data, uh, I could um, characterize the vibrational communication of Firenus plumarius. Its, uh, its uh, signals are composed of uh, two elements. The chirp, chirp that you can see in the uh, orange square, that is an harmonic element, um, and the pulse, there is a broad bed pulse. And uh, here, I hope you could hear it. Yeah. And uh, the chirp is the, the duck sound. <laughs> Philenus Pumarius uses this element to compose his signals, and he has a quite wide repertoire. Male and females, when placed alone on the plant, emit calling signals. However, the male can interact with other males by means of a male male signals. Signal. On the other hand, uh, the females also can interact with males by rejecting them, producing a rejection signal, signal that is used to uh, express distress and her uh, um, not willingness to mate. But she can also reply to the male courtship by means of a response signal. In this case, uh, the courtship and the response signal are um, uh, part of the pair formation process that starts with the mission of the female calling signal, to which a male replies with a male courtship. If the female agrees and replies, uh, a duet is established. So there is a tight synchronization between the female response and, and the male courtship, as you can hear. Here is the male. And at the end comes also the, the female with her chirp, that is the female response. However, females start to call only in the late summer. So prior to this period, they just reject males. Uh, and uh, only old females start to call uh, and reply um, to males. So this rose a question. What triggers the female calling activity and receptivity to mating? We know that uh, in Philenus pumarius, an ovarian purpose, of course. And what does it mean? That even if the adult stage spans from April to November, oviposition um, starts from September. So there could be a, cor a correlation between the female behavior and the development of eggs. To answer this uh, question, I performed an experiment, which started in May and finished in October. And uh, I tested 20 females uh, per period that you can see in the, in the table. And the test consisted in placing a female on a plant, waiting for the spontaneous emission of a calling signal. But we also uh, tried to stimulate the females with a male courtship signal after 15 minutes to see if they were replying to the male. And after each trial, females were dissected and uh, we, uh, to observe the development of their ovaries. Prior to August, uh, none of the females called, replied to the playback, uh, or uh, carried uh, developing eggs inside their uh, abdomen. However, starting from August, uh, the, f uh, the females started to develop their eggs, as you can see in the picture, uh, and they started to call and to reply to the playback. And uh, this trend increased through, throughout the season, reaching a peak in September, October, where all females were um, receptive to mating, but also were carrying uh, mature eggs inside the abdomen. This is an important information because if we want to apply a mating disruption technique, this could be effective only when females are receptive to mating. So to conclude this, uh, um, the main outcomes of these two paragraphs is that we could characterize the vibrational signals involved in mate identification and finding. However, uh, some signals, the role of some signals remained unclear. For instance, um, what is the role of the male calling signal, which is not used for mate finding? Regarding the phys female physio physiology, we could uh, demonstrate that the female behavior is associated to the development of eggs. 
and provide insights for the future application of methane disruption techniques. However, uh, we need to know more about the physiology of females. So, for instance, how they use the sperm, if sperm competition occurs, because even if females are receptive to mating in the late summer, they have a spermateca, so they could store the sperm also in the sp uh, after uh, emerging. However, <laughs> we, uh, we will go on and uh, try to um, disrupt the mating uh, communication. How? Well, we, um, we uh, designed um, a playback which consisted in a continuous noise with, uh, with a frequency range uh, that could cover the frequency, this frequency of the signal of Philenus pumarius, so around 150-1200 Hz. This signal was used obviously when females were receptive to mating, so in September-October, and the signal will, was, the playback was played uh, as loop for 20 minutes, so continuously. In the control was silent. Uh, we could uh, demonstrate that the signal could Im uh, impair the, mate, uh, the mating communication and mate finding. In fact, even if the female were continuously calling during the experiment, because I placed the laser beam, beam close to females to hear if they were calling, male could not uh, establish a duet with them and uh, they could not find the female on the plant. In fact, only one male uh, out of 20 uh, in the treatment found the female on the plant. So mating disruption is possible. Indeed, we need more information uh, before developing a uh, mating disruption technique to be used in the field. The first question is where mating occurs, Philanus pumarius, highly polyphagus, we don't know where he, we, know, we know where it feeds, but we don't know if there is a reference in plants uh, for mating. We also have to test the transmission of the signal to host plants. And indeed we have uh, to test other candidate signals, possibly species specific signal and not just a noise. Another strategy is disrupt uh, the feeding behavior because in this way, uh, we will not reduce the population of the insect, which is very abundant, so uh, it will be anyway very difficult, but we can at least um, prevent a further spread of the disease by preventing the acquisition and inoculation of the bacterium inside the plant. For this reason, we, uh, de uh, we designed a synthetic interference signal based on the female rejection which was uh, modified and assembled to be very distressing, as you can imagine. Hearing this for three hours, I will, I will also stop to feed it, probably. <laughs> so we tested this signal at low and a high volume. And um, for three hours, uh, the, the signal was played as loop. Uh, we, uh, at the same time, uh, where we recorded the feeding behavior of the insect. So, by using the electropenetration graph technique, uh, which, is, uh, which consists in a um, partial circuit, uh, which is completed when the, may, may, when the insect inserts the, style, the stylet inside the plant. Then we can uh, record the feeding behavior, which is expressed by the EPG as uh, waveforms that uh, are representing the feeding, uh, feeding patterns uh, during the the, the feeding activity. Very distressing. We tested uh, this, uh, this signal on sunflowers and uh, we observed that 30% 30 30 30 <laughs> of the insects were not probing, so they were not trying to feed. However, among the insects that uh, could insert the stylet inside the plant, uh, we observed a significant reduction in the injection of xylems up. So even if insects were trying to uh, probe the plant, they were, um, they were uh, performing a less number of xylem ingestions and also shorter uh, xylem ingestions. So as you can see in the picture, the duration of the xylem ingestion phase was significantly lower in the two treatments 
compared to the control. And even if uh, the letters involved suggest that there is not a statistically uh, significant difference between the two treatments, also high versus low volume, if we look at the medians, we can see that the high volume had a higher effect. The medians, pardon, is uh, expressed by the blue triangle on uh, in the picture. So we see that there is a, a higher effect at high volume. So to conclude, we demonstrated that the vibrational playback can be used to disrupt the feeding, feeding behavior of an insect vector. And in particular, we observed less insects that were trying to probe on the plant, and we observed a reduced xylem ingestion. This is very important because uh, we could prevent the acquisition of the bacterium and also the inocul inoculation of the bacterium. And this approach is indeed applicable to other vector pests, in, especially if we talk about herbaceous plants, which are indeed easier than olive plants when we want to transmit a vibrational signal. Future research is addressed at the uh, test the transmission to olive and to identify the signal feature that are um, responsible of uh, the effect on the uh, feeding behavior of the insect. Well, so what is, the, what is the best intensity, the frequency that could uh, be even more effective in disrupting the behavior of the insect. So to conclude, what are the main outcomes of uh, my PhD project? Uh, um, first, the characterization of the vibrational repertoire of Filenus pumarius. Um, uh, second, the association between the female receptivity to mating and the development of eggs. And the demonstration that vibration can be used to disrupt either feeding or, or uh, uh, mating. And uh, to, see, as, uh, to summarize, um, we demonstrated that vibration can be used, uh, yes, to study the behavior of an insect, but also to manipulate the behavior of an insect. And uh, thank you for <laughs> your attention. Thanks to all my supervisor and the uh, um, people that helped me dur during this uh, beautiful journey. If you have questions or projects and we don't have time to uh, to hear you all, uh, here is my email.